So we finished those two models. So you should have four handouts. You know, one uh, one of them is the the commands on GDB, right? That's the the debugger. I don't actually want to go into any particular debugger because, as a rule, I'm agnostic to what whatever language you use or whatever system you develop, right? And GDB is very focused on Unix and um, C-ish kind of stuff, right? So if anyone wants a little tutorial on how to use a debugger um, for your projects and stuff, let me know, and we can either have it in in class or, or offline, right? Um, and there are a few commands, but those are those are very useful, and it's hard, kind of hard to imagine how you debug your programs or how you work with programs without using a debugger. Because printf has its place, but um, what have you, right? And there's the homework project and the homework assignment. Um, read through them, read through them, and I'll I'll say a little bit about them in the next lecture, right? To see um, if they make sense, right? So. Getting back to the ne next module. So, so far, we spent all our time looking at the processing, and processing, if you think of it as, is the brains of what, 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 the, what the systems are. You know, we're looking at processors and threads and you know, synchronizations and, and all those stuff. We missed the main reason why the processor is there, which is operating on data, right? Essentially, data is what the processors should operate on, because without data, um, the processors are useless, right? And the reason why we have two models to study, so, so we're going to look at the next two models are basically on how to manage data and how to deal with data, uh, is the is a notion we, we mentioned way up front, which is there are different kinds of technologies. Some are really fast and some are really slow. And the slower technologies tend to be cheaper, tend to be plentiful, and tend to be more stable. So for example, if you think of like this or CDs or what have you, they're cheaper, they're, they're big, and, and they persist when, they, when you pull the power, power, power card. And the, the faster ones tend to be smaller, like memory or cache or registers and, and, and so on and so forth. They're faster, and they're also temporary. So when you pull the power card, they go off, right? So the key of what we're trying to do on, on these two models is basically trying to move this data such that you want the data on the storage so it can be there when you when you exit the system, but you want to move them closer to make them faster, right? So that's that's the tension. So for this model, we're going to look at memory management, which essentially focuses mostly on main memory and other te uh, temporary memory, and the next one is on storage and and uh, file systems and stuff, right? So in terms of the memory management stuff, before I go into the, the details, so what we what we really want is if you think of the memory as this abstract long array, right? So if you have a, a PC with four gigs of memory or so, so you assume that the, um, there's four gigabytes worth of like this one big <coughs> memory, right? So what we're trying to look in, in this module is essentially trying to see if I have a program, how do I put this program somewhere in this memory, right? So how do, how do I use it from application perspective? Where do I say, for example, you know, this is program one and this is program two or what, what have you, right? So how do I allocate this, this big chunk of physical memory to different applications? How do I make sure that this application cannot trample on something that, that this application has? How do I make sure that we load this program into this memory? How do I make sure um, st stuff like that happens, right? And one of the, the the key aspects is many of these require that you have to get some sort of a hardware su support, right? So for example, when you say the program one goes here and program two goes here, right? One of the fundamental stuff that you want from the hardware is to have a notion of if you try to access anything beyond these two limits, then you get a trap. You get something to say, applications should not uh, be allowed to do that, right? So you have to have a mechanism where every memory instruction, you can tell the hardware to say, if this application tries to ma touch any of the other stuff, let me know. Otherwise, you want the system to go as fast as possible, right? So you, you don't want to check every memory location and say, are they trying to access this? Are they trying to access this kind of stuff? So you want some kind of a hardware support. So. We focus on what hardware support we need, 
what is OSS ro role and what is, happens by hardware, right? Because if you don't have this partnership, then your system will be slow or you won't be able to pro provide this protection, right? And one of the basic ways we deal with that is to have a notion of a logical address and a physical address, right? Logical address is basically what your program sees. So when you write a program, you write assuming you have all the memory space. You don't, you don't program assuming there are other processes unless you use threads or what have you. So from your perspective, this program has no idea that there's other programs here, right? And this one has no idea that the other one is here. And you create the notion by creating a notion of a logical address. So for your program, it looks like you have 0 to 1,000, right? And for this one, you have 0 to 1,000 and so on in logical address space. So we introduce the notion of logical address space and how you translate from logical to whatever the hardware provides, right? So applications never know that all this is happening. Applications don't know that when you go beyond this address, you get fault. They know when they get segmentation fault, but that's managed by. So you have a partnership of the hardware, partnership of what OS does and what the, what the application would do. And the key is you set all this up using the hardware, and then you get out of the way and let these processes go, right? And, the, and as you move forward, one of the things we do is you may not have enough memory, so you have to move some things off into the lower component. So you move stuff from cache to main memory, main memory to hard disk using swapping and, and other techniques. Um, and essentially, we are trying to manage the memory resources using many of these techniques. So, so that's what we'll focus on for the memory management stuff, right? Unfortunately, the it's three minutes to the end of the class, right? So I don't think I want to actually go into this section. So I'll, we'll, we'll start with this on the next lecture, but essentially that's what we'll focus on this in this section, right?